हेलो एवरीवन बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम स्टार्टिंग विद द लेक्चर नंबर 11 ऑन एस्फिक्सिया एंड द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस लेक्चर विल बी दैट आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन दिस लेक्चर थ्रोटलिंग और मैनुअल स्ट्रेंगुलेशन इन इन दिस लेक्चर द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ लर्निंग विल बी that i will discuss the definition of throttling its occurrence its mode of depth and also i will be discussing in this lecture the mugging which is the compression compression of neck within the arm lock or the bend of the elbow so i will discuss it in detail then the other objective will be that i will be discussing in this lecture the autopsy findings of throttling and three areas of main concern are the external findings on the body injuries on the neck and internal autopsy findings and i will discuss uh, specific bruises which occur on the neck because of throttling they are called pain impulses what are its mechanics how they appear i will discuss them then other medical legal issues are throttling that means whether the death is due to throttling and if it is throttling then it's about accrets that means suicidal homicidal or accidental so starting with the topic throttling it is also called as manual strangulation the compression of the neck by means of hands that is called throttling or manual strangulation throttling is constriction of the neck of a person by another person with one or both hands and that's why it is called as manual strangulation that means by means of hands the compression of neck of the victim in the bend of the elbow or by applying foot or knee on the neck is called mugging so mugging is that if you compress the neck in the bend of the elbow applying arm lock or by foot or by knee which is and the pressure is used to apply the constricting force that is called as mugging that is compression of neck other than hands that is bend of the elbow or knee or with foot then it is called mugging and it also leads to the compression of the respiratory passages in the vasculature that means the blood vessels that will result in fatal outcome now the occurrence of throttling it may be homicidal and almost invariably it is homicidal accidental is occasional and suicidal is not possible now about the mechanism of death either it is hypoxic hypoxia when the fatal period is 2 minutes or more or there can be reflex cardiac arrest 
which will be leading to instantaneous death because of the stimulation or excitation of the carotid sinus or carotid bodies which are located on the carotid vessels and a slight pressure or constricting force applied on that area will lead to excitation of the carotid bodies. Then there can be cerebral hypoxia or ischemia if the carotids and the vertebral vessels are compressed and pressure is too much. Now regarding the autopsy findings, the areas of concern, they are divided into three main areas that we look for. That is external findings, which are on the body. Then specific area is the neck, that is the injuries on the neck, then internal autopsy findings. So regarding the external findings on the body, if the death is due to reflex cardiac arrest, then there will be no positive finding related to asphyxia because the excitation of the carotid body suddenly leads to cardiac standstill or asystole and it is not an asphyxi asphyxial process. So no finding of asphyxia will be seen. Then external injury depend upon the method, method of throttling and the resistance offered by the victim. The application of force may be either with one hand or both hands or forearm. Here the two hands are being applied and the victim is trying to get himself free. The external signs of autopsy which are apparent like there will be congestion, cyanosis and petechial hemorrhages. These are non-specific signs of asphyxia. The extent and pattern of these signs will also depend upon the rate of asphyxial process. When the constricting force has been considerable, the signs will be well marked. The tongue may be bruised, it may be protruded. There may be injuries on the face, chest, which indicates that there was struggle by the victim to get himself free. The face and eyes may show multiple particular hemorrhages. Then the injuries on the neck. The situation and extent of the bruised area on the neck will depend upon the relative position of the assailant and the victim. The manner of grasping the neck, the degree of pressure exercised upon the throat, they all will change the appearance. The marks of bruising and ecchymosis are usually found on the front and the sides of the neck, chiefly around the larynx and around about it, above it. Then injuries on the neck. Continuing with injuries on the neck, the soft tissues of the neck are compressed as they are forced upward and backward against the cervical vertebra. That means you, the assailant is pushing the larynx, the base of the tongue upward and backward against the posterior pharyngeal wall, which, is, which are the bodies of the cervical vertebra and the pressure is towards that. And when the force is applied with one hand from the front of the victim, superficial bruises and concentric abrasions due to fingernails may be present. And when one hand is used, 
there is one big bruise on one side and multiple bruises are observed. They are called penny bruises. And usually when one hand is used, a bigger bruise, which is because of the thumb is on one side and the four bruises of the fingertips is on the other side. So the multiple bruises on one side because of the finger pads or the tips of the fingers and single large bruise on the other side by the thumb. And these are commonly known as penny bruises because they, they are oval or circular because of the pads of the fingers and the thumb. And these, they appear like that. It, this is a, a little bit variation. Then if the assailant changes his hand or he applies both the hands, then the multiple bruises are seen on the both sides of the neck. The bruising caused by thumb is generally wider than those caused by the fingers. Similarly, in addition to bruises, concentric abrasion caused by fingernails are also seen. And that caused by thumbnail is deeper and wider. Now, continuing with the injuries on the neck, sometimes the assailant's epidermal tissue is deposited on the neck and this can prove to be a trace evidence. And if the soft garment are in between the hands and the neck, there will be no external injury. Skin on the back of the neck is tough and there is little bruising at the back of the neck. Now regarding the internal injuries. Head and chest are opened first to drain the blood and to get the bloodless field in the neck. So this is a common principle and precaution that whenever there is allegation of asphyxial death by the constrictor, constriction of the neck and you have to find the injuries on the neck, then you will expect a bloodless, a dry, clear field when you do the layer by layer dissection. And the precaution is that you drain the blood by opening the skull and the chest first so that when you open the neck, it will be bloodless and clean field. So neck should be opened in a V-shaped incision and a careful dissection layer by layer should be done. In usual case, whether the constricting force has been considerable, the signs of asphyxia will be well marked. The subcutaneous tissues of the neck show extravasation of blood beneath the injured areas. Sometimes these hemorrhages are less as compared to external injuries. And conversely, absence of external injury does not preclude the fatal internal damage. Outside, maybe some soft material intervening, there are not much injuries which are elicitable externally. But when you dissect out the neck underneath the skin, there is extensive bruising of the subcutaneous tissues and the muscles. The fracture of hoid bone and laryngeal cartilages may be present if the person or the victim is above the age of 40 because now they have been calcified. The fracture of hoid bone seldom occurs in hell, hanging or ligature strangulation. And it is strongly in favor of throttling because direct compression of the neck is applied by means of hand and it is compressing the hoid bone from laterally, thereby causing its fracture. And the fracture of 
uh, hoid bone in this is usually at the junction of the outer two third and the inner one third. And this is by the squeezing force that when you are squeezing, you are applying pressure from lateral and that will be squeezing and the broken fragment will be displaced inward. As you are squeezing, the broken ends will be displaced inwards. Now regarding the medical legal aspects, the most important question is with, that whether death is due to throttling and if it is because of throttling, then it is suicidal, homicidal or accidental. Whether the death is due to strangulation, the evidence of violent compression of neck is most likely which are bruising due to thumb and finger, nail marks, swelling and lividity of the face. These are all in the favor of the violent compression of neck. The bruising or laceration of larynx, damage to the windpipe, muscles and the vessels in front and the side of the neck. The fracture of the hoid bone, the greater porno, they are in favor of throttling. Now it is suicidal, homicidal or accidental. In suicide, it is impossible to cause suicide by throttling because as soon as the unconsciousness supervene, the hand will relax and the grip will be released. Regarding homicidal nature, the homicidal throttling is common form of murder. The victims are usually infant, children and women and women may be sexually assaulted and throttled. Adults may be throttled when they are under the influence of some drug because a young healthy individual and to become overpowered by another will be difficult unless it is stupefied by some drug. In 15 to 20 second, suffocating grip can dispose of a strong, healthy adult. So in so much short time, the person will become unconscious. Regarding accidental in nature, it is rare. Now the summary of this lecture is that in this, after this lecture, we have learned what is throttling or manual strangulation. We have understood its definition, its occurrence, mode of death, and also we have discussed mugging and we have learned what is mugging. Then we have understood the autopsy finding of throttling and the main areas as we know the concern are externally on the body and injuries on the neck and the internal autopsy findings. Then we have understood the penny bruises. What are penny bruises? Then we have understood what the medical legal issues can be arisen with the throttling. That whether the death is due to throttling and if it is throttling, then we have learned that its occurrence can be accidental, suicidal, or homicidal. Thank you very much. So that's all about the lecture number 11. Now we'll move on to lecture number 12. Thank you. Take care. Allah. Peace.